Welcome viewers to uh, an unexpected video. Are you <sighs> air freshener incompetent once again? So today is the 24th of April and um, this is a very vague, not very interesting and probably quite a boring vlog. It looks like I bought another new car, viewers, and like one of the last cars I bought, I have actually driven this before. A friend of mine has had it for four years. I first drove this car in October 2020 on No Budget Reviews. It is a 1989 Nissan Sunny 1.6 GSX manual saloon, which is a very rare specification. This is an N13 Sunny. Um, those of a Pulsar in many other countries, and if you get an insurance quote on this car, it will tell you it's a Sunny Pulsar. Why it's like that, I don't know. I don't really understand, but uh, you know, there we go. It's very luxurious. It reminds me a bit of my old Volvo um, 460 GLE in some respects, but we haven't got um, leather interior, and we haven't got um, electric mirrors. We've got the sunroof and everything. The engine's not quite running right. It's not the GA16 in this. It's um, it's a it's a different type of engine. It's, um, the face of the N13 Sunny was in 1989. This is a late 89, but uh, we think this car was unregistered for quite a while. It's not got the GA16 in it. It's got a different engine. It's actually uh, not. It's not running right though. It, there's been a lot of work done to this car to try to make it run right, but it's it's still not running right. So. One of the reasons I, I got it for the price that I did, which we, I won't be talking about, I don't think, um, is because the engine weren't needed doing. And uh, Mr. Bristian, and my friend who's owned this car for the last four years, he was going to do it, but I just said, what's the price for it not done? Because I have plans for this car, viewers. Um, it is going to see Mr. Coleman, the rubbish mechanic, who um, knows these cars quite well. He runs them, he runs them very well indeed. They, um, the sort of things that people used to bang a race back in the day. Um, this one is far too good for that. It's got really minimal kind of like surface rust. I think it's around the area where the rust is. Um, and that's that's about it. There is other work to do, I think. It, it, it does need a new aerial. Um, some lots of speakers don't work. The one in this door works. The speakers in the back don't currently work. They need to be sort of um, put in. Um, properly. This air fresher is really annoying me. Let's see if we can get rid of this. Oh, oh that's better. Oh, excellent. Lovely bit of air fresher incompetence. So, yeah, five speed manual. It's done 80,000 miles. It's actually generally really, really good condition. It's, it's not, it's really, really got minimal rust on it. Um, there are a couple of things on the MOT that I think were advised, but the MOT expires in February 2025, so that'll be okay for a little bit. It's, yeah, it's, it's good fun to drive this. They, they drive much better than they look. Um, these, uh, these old sunnies, it's a similar thing with, it's sort of like a Maestro, but this is actually probably better made than a Maestro, much as I love Maestros, and I do. Um, or Montegos, this, it's just a better made car, really, in general, which is a shame. Um, it's maybe not as characterful as one of those, but it's it's good. It's got a, a carb on it, this thing. It's an auto choke on it. But it, generally, it's, it's not too bad. I think what we'll do, actually, is um, stop off somewhere on the way back. And those of you who've not seen the No Budget Review episode on this car, because it was made in the first year when we did No Budget Reviews, actually, that. Um, we'll just take a very brief look at it. Um, we'll have other looks at, at um, this car in the future. but. Um, I think that's it for now. So here it is. It's so square this car. It is, it's, you can tell it was designed in the 1980s, can't you? Mr. Brisbane put these wheel trims on. Overall, the car it looks really good. There are two things to mention, really. About the bodywork. One is that the rear bumpers had a bit of an impact on it at some point and it's flaking off at the top. 
Arches and things are really good actually on this car. Other thing is this bumper. There is actually another bumper that I am going to pick up, which is the bumper that the car was wearing in 2020 at the front, which is a um, like a lower specification um, unpainted bumper, but it doesn't have this big hole in it. I prefer the car with this bumper on it personally. I would have asked to put the other one on if not. Um, there is a little bit of a something going on here. I'm not quite sure what that is. And also, um, the aerial is <laughs> absolutely broken and missing. There's a little bit of rust here. But other than that, it's pretty good. Have a look at the interior. It's a cloth interior. It's not... Um, oh, come on. I wish it was leather interior, but the GSX is the highest specification of the Sunny in terms of luxury, and you just got this cloth interior, which is fine. You don't even get an armrest in the middle, I don't think. The seats do actually fold, as you can see, you pull those things up, and there are the speakers with the wires, which um, just need sort of re plumbing in, really. Um, he had a se separate speakers on this, and he's taken them for his new car, the uh, Granada video, so. That's fine. Original dealer plates, I think. As you can see, Sunny GSX. Didn't say Pulsar on it. Let's open up the uh, boot quickly. Don't lose this key. Um, yeah, it's quite a big boot. We've got various other parts in here. Um, some of them I think he's going to give me later. Um, hopefully he's given me the spare in here. Uh, let's just have this look. Yep, it's there. Brilliant. Just put that down. Don't lose the key. Area. It's quite highly specified for 1989 actually. You have to press this little button here to um, remove the key. It's a very typical Nissan of the era. Very, very 1980s Japanese <laughs> car interior, isn't it? Um, I'd need to take this phone holder off thing. I don't need that. Um, no air conditioning, unfortunately. It'd be this button if it was a, um, for some other markets. Radio, um, that's missing one of the knobs on it. I don't know what I want to do about that, actually. Um, clock's up there. Glove box. Start there. Don't forget mission documents there or not. Four power windows. For some reason, you didn't get electric windows. I don't know why. Strange. Indicator and wiper stocks are the wrong way around. Typical Japanese car of this era. Hello, autofocus. Um, yeah, five-speed mode. It's a lovely gearbox. For this. It's really, really nice to use. Um, and yeah, it drives well. We've got a power sunroof as well. Headlining is good. It's like a vinyl headlining in this car. Right. Um, we've got a Nissan branded pedal down there. Uh, yeah, I suppose. Gosh, I reviewed this car four years ago, so you can watch that video if you need to know more. And um, we will look, take a look onto the bonnet. So, definitely not a GA16 engine, that would look completely different. Got a carb on here, as you can see. Um, I think it's a Hitachi carb, I could be wrong. A little wavy cylinder head going on here, like on the old um, General Motors Family 1 engines. Very, very spacious to work on under here. You can see the gearbox quite easily. Cam belt, yeah, it was done a couple of years ago, I think, so I don't think we need to do that. But it's not, it's not running very well, this car. Um, it's rattling like anything the tappets just sound terrible and so i am actually not going to drive this car to mr coleman's a place to get the work done i'm going to get it transported because i don't think it's going to it's going to make it um unless i do that it's okay for a little local journey like this but um you know um it just be safe really i don't want to do any damage to it but yeah um i'm actually really happy this means um, once i bought this i can take it to all sorts of shows for like pre-1995 cars and things like that um, and it generally mechanically it's it's quite good um, but actually apart from this this um, problem with the cylinder head it's got which will be fixed and um, after that yep uh, aerial needs sorting out um, and the stereo wiring and things like that apart from that I think I would probably leave it like this right let's get back in the car and um, get back on our way shall we I just need to compare this car with the Mark IV Escort I drove recently. Obviously these were a bit more expensive and this is a much higher specification model. But it's quite easy to drive. The gearbox is really nice and this has actually got power steering in it as well, which is remarkably good. Yeah, that, that door seal needs sorting out as well, viewers. That's something else. But yeah, it handles actually pretty well. Despite the power steering, you can feel the car quite nicely through the, uh, through the steering. So yes, what we're going to do with 
this when it's fixed? Well, I don't actually know. I mean, I bought this because Mr. Brisdian finally said he was going to part with it, and I just got I just got in quickly, and said yes, I would like it, and very kindly he agreed to sell it to me uh, because I've known him for years. So yeah, I don't know which shows will will uh, be seeing this at exactly. I'm hoping the first one is Pop and Flying, which is I think sixth of May. Um, which is a pre-2004 show. Other than that, yeah, there's loads of others coming up and, you know, this is a very suitable car for loads of those. I've Retro Rider Weekender, where it's, it's been before. Um, I actually drove this car, Retro Rider Weekender, in 2021. So, yes, I'm, I'm actually pretty happy, although I won't be driving in this condition. It, <laughs> for anyone who's even want to go in this until it's fixed. But uh, there we go. Thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video and leave a comment below, and we shall see you again soon for more, I don't know, surprising purchases on the channel.